Whipper. Happy Monday, guys. Fitzy and Whipper with you on the podcast. We are live in LA, and let me tell you, bloody lock up your... You what? Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> lock up Whipper. Oh, you That's all you're locking that. up. No, you can't lock up me. I'll tell you what you can try lock and lock up. Lock up your minibar. <laughs> oh, lock up Tom's knees, because I can see right up his shorts. Oh, and I'll tell you what, that fruit is out of season. Far out. Oh, mate, that's the second time you've made that joke. Whip. I thought yeah. fruit in LA was meant to be pretty <laughs> fresh, but those plums. Whoa. Iron Man impersonator downstairs <laughs> in Hollywood, also a Spider-Man one, but that fruit bowl impersonator is not getting any money at all. That's extraordinary, Go Tom. on, have a taste. Uh, oh, oh, my God. God. oh well, This is a podcast, that you is, That sick. peach is rotten. Edda. Hey, um, we are here at the Hotel Roosevelt. We're here for G'day USA, an amazing event. We've got so many stars that attended it. We never got to speak to them. No, we <laughs> Katy <didn't>. Perry <laughs> flirted outrageously with us. She ran right. past you faster than yeah. anything. The Kid Leroy. If you want to go Couldn't see get rid of him. Whipper Get Burnt by Katy Perry, it is just magnificent. Go to the Fitzy and Whipper Instagram account. But here's the podcast. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Well, it was the night of night in LA last night. G'day, USA. It was magnificent. Only 400 people. I don't know how we snagged a ticket. But people were knocking on the door. They were trying to get tickets. You're right. A very intimate room fits. It was a great. Sarah, you look magnificent. Oh, thanks, boys. Well done, you Sarah. did too. You did too. Your suit looked... Um, looked... Do you know what? I don't want to have a go at my wife. But I think she's washed my suit and how, put it in the dryer. No, how many times on this trip has Whipper said about an item of clothing, I think my wife washed this, it's because shrunk. It's, it was so tight, I couldn't do the button up. <laughs> and you know what? Fitz was waiting in an Uber downstairs at the bottom of the hotel. For 20 mm. minutes. For 20 minutes because I couldn't do my buttons up. And, and then I put my shirt on and ripped a hole under the arm. Because no. it didn't fit. Oh, dude. So, Talisa, stop washing my clothes and putting them in the dryer. It's actually quite sad. You're going you're to hear all the celebrities that we spoke to on the blue carpet at, at 8 o'clock this morning. We've got some great stories, actually. But it, it was, you know what, to kick off the night with one of the biggest artists in the world, Australia's own Kid Leroy. Like, he was on fire. Massive. Got up there. Well, this is him p- p- performing last night. He's a talent, that kid. He stuck around, then received he received an award, and then he was off. Mm. I mean, security everywhere. It's, like, this is a guy that's just about to turn 20 years of age from Redfern, but and you, you just know, go, what? He was signed to Sony at the age of 10. It's crazy. Like, local kid. Yeah. And you know what was mm. amazing? When they paid tribute to him, and they showed all this footage of him, just as a young guy, yeah. but not only great at rapping and singing, it was the fact that he was saying, I want to be able to give every other kid a chance. Mm. I want them to know that you can do this yeah. and live your dreams. Yeah, and I thought, a nice man. how good is that of a young kid saying, I want to set an example and tell everybody that anything's possible? And his mum and dad being there last night, that was sweet. He and was, oh, it was cute to we, watch. Uh, we lucked out with the table we had, didn't we? Because we were sitting there literally half a metre mm. away was Miranda Kerr sitting next to Katy Perry, Perry. Mm. and Evan Spiegel, her husband, Katy um, Mir- uh, Miranda Kerr's husband, was right right there as well. For the kid Leroy to be there oh. and Katy Perry yes, singing along oh, yes. yeah, that was to cool. his performance was massive. On the table next to us as well was Sam Worthington. There's another guy that you've got to admire. I mean, he's been sober for eight years and to dedicate his life. To, well, he won the Excellence in Film and TV Award, and the guy's career is unbelievable. Yeah. And you know what? We you're going to hear a chat, a great chat. Round two of the Whipper Roast from Sam Worthington <laughs> on the blue Man. carpet at 8 o'clock. He ripped into me, didn't he? Oh, and then Lara came in and ripped into you as well. It just it was wasn't great. fair. I got beaten up on the blue carpet. <laughs> Do you See, know what was amazing, though? You look at Sam Worthington, and he's such an understated guy. Mm. Like, I think that's why it's he's so brilliant, because he's so raw and so real in all yeah. the movies. And to think Avatar's the highest-selling movie ever, yeah. and then the new Avatar that's just been released has gone to number four. Yeah, so he go- sits at one and four, and then transfers Fusion, the new movie which is coming out and is is now on stand, is awesome. It's amazing. He's brilliant. Yeah, he's really, really good in that. So, uh, do you know what we loved about Sam Worthington as well? Because there is a lot of people from America there, right, in the room. And then you've got your little, you know, your, your splattering of Aussies. Yeah. Sam decided to get up with his speech and he just went full ochre. And he said, right, I'm going to do this speech in Australian slang. So a majority of the room had no idea what he was talking about. But here's a bit of his speech. 
<laughs> and I needed to do the Harold Holt because, you know, I definitely knew I didn't want to work at the bottle. I wanted to have a sing as a dax every now. <laughs> now I watched the films and I thought Stone and Gross. That bullfed Brian Brown could do this. I <laughs> I knew making films would be hard yakka. It would take me yonks to crack, but you know, I thought I'd suss it out. And thought I'd head over to that great Australia in the north, the US of A. <laughs> so I fanged it to Tinseltown with a cheap wine and a three day growth, mugging me sideways. Some Sepo agents took a punt on me like I was a bale dish liquor. And I was like, go on, have a go, you mug. Give it a crack, like when Booney went to chug 52 beers on a flight <laughs> What a on, reference. Do you know what I love? When he made a comment about budgie smugglers mm. and Katy Perry, who was trying to understand what the hell he was talking about, leaned into Miranda Kerr and said, what are budgie, budgie smugglers? smugglers yeah. And she had to explain how it looks like you've smuggled a budgie in your pants. But then she looked horrified. Like, yeah. and what? S- Spiegel, Evan, yeah. couldn't understand a word of it. Delta did an amazing tribute oh, to Olivia Newton-John. Yeah. That, yeah. that was unbelievable. And then at the end, she got every all the celebrities up on stage to sing... I still call Australia home, which was hard for Katy Perry because she doesn't call Australia home. No, yes. she doesn't know the song, think, she doesn't yeah. know the lyrics. I think what you're saying is you don't know the lyrics, then Hoags is up on stage. <laughs> Hoags is kind of dribbling into the microphone. Katy's there awkwardly dancing. Miranda Kerr's excited to be there. Yep. And Sam Worthington just had his hands in his pockets <laughs> trying to work out why he was on stage singing. So, Miranda, the, 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 the amazing thing, and I didn't know that Miranda Kerr and Katy Perry were so close, mm. right? And they are obviously now with Orlando and the kids and Evan Spiegel was there as well for Miranda, but Miranda received an award and Katie presented it to her, which was amazing, in the excellence of arts and the industry of arts, right? So she gets up there for a great chat. They're sitting right next to us. Whipper sees Evan Spiegel, like the guy who owns Snapchat. And yeah. then he's got like, he's introduced, I've got a photo, I need to put this up on the Instagram account. He's introduced mate, himself. Spiegel and I are good mates. You, were, trying to, you were trying to get some shares in Snapchat. It wasn't <laughs> working, mate. He was off you, right? And But you thought you'd become best mates with oh, him. He, he was trying he, to move you on. He wouldn't leave me alone. We're talking about Stop. being parents. He's 32 years old. And worth just as much in billions. So then he's there's a this, baby. He is then a baby. Then there's this moment, right? We run out of red wine at the table. So Whipper leans over Miranda Kerr and goes, "Can I just grab your red?" <laughs> I mean, your Hang justification was they're not drinking oh, it. <laughs> Spiegel wasn't on the red. Neither was Curry. Oh. And and Katy Perry had some sort of little vodka lime thing. Now. Katy Perry made a comment to Miranda Kerr about being my health inspiration. Miranda Kerr sat at the table there last night. She ate a banana. She took a banana with her. Did yeah. you really? Yes, ate a banana. No. So she was peeling a banana at the table. Wow. And I was looking going, she's having a banana. And then Tom nudges yeah. me and goes, she's peeling a banana. And she left to go and get a special drink in a yes. bottle. She was gone for about she, 15 minutes. She came back and she had like a green juice in a bottle. Yes. So here she is. Having a banana and a green juice oh. while we're on the steak and red. No, you, now, the you night, in, we had a lamb dish and we, you inhaled three of those. We I'm had the lamb sure. and the night was sponsored by Penfolds. Yes. So you've got a bottle of 389 on the table. <laughs> I look over at Spiegel and Spiegs isn't into it. Yeah, he's doing, a filter, not he's on doing it. a filter on Snapchat. He's doing the funny face, he's dancing as a bunny <laughs> and then he's doing the swirly tongue on <laughs> Snapchat. And Katy Perry, I don't know what she was doing. So I just leaned over and said, Spiegs. Can you flick us that oh, 389? What a loser. No, I was actually, you they, know what I did? They were disgusting. To be friendly, I very quickly went from Evan to Ev. Oh, oh he so loved that. When I leaned over, I went, hey, oh. Ev, oh. do you reckon we could have that bottle of red off your table? We, this is our first oh, and oh, last oh, 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 oh. G'day USA ever. Oh. We will never be invited. <laughs> it's our second, and I'm looking forward to the third. But you got to listen in. 8 o'clock, we'll speak to them all. Sam Worthington, Lara was there as well. Miranda, we had a great chat with her about banter. <laughs> <laughs> She was hilarious. But there's another one. Kit Gurry is an Australian actor. You've got to hear this story. He's come up with an idea for a TV show. And Sean Penn somehow read the screenplay for it. Yeah. Rings him and says... It's amazing. You've got three choices that I'm going to give you. 
about this show involving Sean Penn. Yeah, you won't be able to say the third on air. No, no, you can't. So you're going to hear that at 8 o'clock this morning. We'll give you all more updates from G'day USA. Ever felt like a holiday after your holiday? Plan your next getaway on the What If app and access mobile exclusive deals. Plus, select hotels are fully refundable just in case your plans change. Booking cancellation windows apply. What if it's Aussie for travel? We are just watching the video that is now up on the Fitzy and Whipper Instagram account account of G'day USA last night and we were lucky enough to secure a spot on the blue carpet and speak speak to some of the biggest names. Do you know what? I was nervous because you're right. We walked the blue carpet first, Fitz, and then we got to stand at the end and I knew that we were going to have to have some RA game well, well. because people, being right at the end, people talk, yeah. right? All the celebrities are doing interviews as they come along the line to us. Yeah. So by the time they get to us, they're worn out. We needed to be well, on fire. Go and, have it, go and check out the vid. <laughs> You were burning, that's for sure. Please check out the vid because (laughs) right at the start, Whipper yells out to Katy Perry and it is the biggest burn I've ever seen in my life. It is rose burn. It is unbelievable. It's still burning in my soul right now. (laughs) I was cooked. It is magnificent. No, it was a great night and uh, here are some of the highlights. Angela Bishop. Congratulations on tonight. Very exciting. What can we expect this evening? Uh, Look, it's a real celebration. 20 years is a lot to celebrate. And there have been some doozies. Don't forget, Keith and Nicole met here at the 2005 G'day USA. Yeah, they were introduced here. They've now been married 17 years. Incidentally, I'm pretty sure Keith didn't ring for four months. So the fact that it all came together (laughs) is pretty good luck, really. The Kid Leroy. Kid Leroy. Kid Leroy. The kid. The kid. Oh, how are you, brother? What's up? How are you doing? Good to see you, mate. Good to see you, man. How are you doing? performing tonight. Yes. Yes. Are you ready? Have you got everything under control? No. Sam Worthington. Round two of the roast. You can... <laughs> no, you ripped into me. Oh, you're popping out of it, number one. Oh. All right? This isn't, oh. this isn't pretty. I shouldn't have come back from Switzerland. You, you, and you look like the waiter. What do you um, mean? So... <laughs> the interview we had with your wife was the best chat we've had on the red carpet. How are you, buddy? I'm all right. We saw Matt Nabel here. We're talking Transfusion, which is an amazing movie. Congratulations. He was very serious, Matt. I don't think he wanted to do the blue carpet tonight. You're, do, you're taking the whole role. No, he's, he's like me. He's finds these things a bit unnatural. I mean, in Transfusion, when he's playing an ex-serviceman, like you all are, yeah. he's the perfect guy for yeah, that. I've seen it. Yeah. yeah. I've seen yeah, it. We, I, love we, it we, I know he saw it. I, I, I love it. I love it. Because he never does no, any research. Nothing. The other, nothing. The other day in the studio, I was saying to you, I thought the Transfusion was going to be what the soldier required at the start. That's right. Mate, I've yeah. seen the entire film. Yeah. I would never fake something in front of you, Sam Worthington. <laughs> so you've got to get up and say a few words tonight, is that right? Yeah. Do you start sure. with uh, Delara and the family and the kids? And I don't know, mate. We're going to have to see, aren't we? Do you want to test any material on us? Have you got any, <laughs> any jokes? I'm, I, need, I need some help, I think. <laughs> Enjoy the night, legend. Lovely to see, to see it. Any Did more roast? Research. One more roast on him? <laughs> <laughs> Delta Goodrum. You know, you've done so many of these carpets at the people at the end of the naughty ones. Yeah, definitely, they? definitely. I support this. I sat at the back of the bus growing up. Exactly. You know, that's, that's, that's <laughs> well, yeah, in the back of the four-wheel drive. Remember that? Remember yes. that? Yes. To the pub? Yes, you let me drive what do as you a 15 year old. We let Delta drive <laughs> as a 15 year old. Yeah, right. yeah. And then true. her career from there just went oh, catapulted it was, it from was there. It was the good luck I needed in my life. Prior so when to... you when you perform tonight, before yeah. you say anything else, yes. it'll be a, I need to it'll thank a... Fitzy for letting <laughs> no. me drive when I was 15. Yeah, sure. I... <laughs> where's Maddie tonight? Where, yeah, he's where's... backstage somewhere. Oh, he's here. Yeah, where's your big he's hunk? Performing. So well, beautiful, isn't we, he? We he caught is up very... with Conrad Saul. Yeah, not yeah. happy As with you at all. Why? What did I do? You stole his guitar player. Yeah, I mean, Sneezy Lee. Can't wait to have a champagne with you later. Yeah. I'm looking forward to it, too. Katy Perry. Katy Perry, Fitzy and Whipper, how are you? I miss you. <laughs> I missed you. I, I, I missed oh, that. That was... <laughs> See you later, mate. <laughs> she was all over me. Ouch. <laughs> you know, Katy Perry. You've got to go see it. <laughs> What's even more awkward is to find out we're sitting half a metre away from her. Not even half a metre. So for her to then turn around and see me, yep. it was good because we got to chat um, mm. you know, at the dinner instead of on the red carpet, on no. the blue carpet. Safe to say you're the reason why she had her security come and stand between her and us. 
Yeah, it was. It, she she I got, wanted to talk more. Miranda she Kerr didn't. got presented an award from Katy Perry. Mm. I, I was actually. I'm, it's really refreshing to see, you know, because I thought there was a bit of bad blood initially, but with Orlando and stuff. But they are best friends. They yeah. describe they describe themselves as living in a modern family. Yeah, they the two families blended together. But the two of them are really. They do interviews all the time where they just mm. talk about how much they love each other. It um, you know what, an amazing effort for Katy Perry to do that to actually attend. What, to, to burn Whipper, <laughs> then present the award to Miranda, and then at the end get be pulled up by Delta to sing "I Still Call Australia Home" and not know any of the lyrics. Yeah, yeah. she'd had enough by home time, I reckon. I reckon she had a moment where she went, "I did Super Bowl." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. How, how come I'm here? Yeah. <laughs> why, why, why am I next to Crocodile Dundee? What is this? I'm always travelling. I love being free. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Live from LA in the Hotel Roosevelt in a room that now smells like Metwurst. <laughs> It's chilli salami, mate. Mate, what are you... He, well, horrible. Whip is hungry, right? <laughs> and he instantly has to eat straight away or else he starts to feel sick. I do. I do. I have that moment Did where you? I go, oh, my God, how do I fix this feeling? And Tommy is giving us a tub of scroggin, <laughs> some cheese, some cold cheese and some meats. And you've ordered a ton of food to the room. You I couldn't wait chicken. 22 minutes no, till it gets here. I've got some chicken wings for you. Well, oh, mate, this is a makeshift show. We're putting it together. Tom, can you do me a favour because I'm sitting straight across from you. Yes. Can you shut your legs? Because I can see, I can see your lolly bag. Sorry, it's, up the inside of your shorts. Yeah, Tom, those shorts are very oh short. Oh my god! Far that out. fruit is out of season. That is. God, the Super Bowl's only a couple of weeks away, but that fruit bowl is off. Oh my um, god! <laughs> Can we talk about professional sportsman Ben Simmons? He's not having a good time, Ben Simmons, at the moment. What's happened now? But he's not playing good basketball for the Brooklyn Nets. Um, the other thing is, well, his love life, Sarah, and you mm. follow his love life. Well, he used to date Kendall Jenner. Yes. And we thought that one was going to stick because that was a nice little union. That's why his basketball's fallen apart. No, no, you, they broke up a while back. You, you, you date a Kardashian or Jenner. Stop. And your world falls apart. No, no, do not say that at all. Love Are you Sarah. saying it's a curse? Oh, just a bit. Okay. Um, he then fell in love with the UK Love Island host. Her name is May Jama. Uh, oh, Majama. Maya Jamba, I think. Is that Jama or something? Is that like Pajama? Jama. Maya Jama, Jama, Jama or something. My Jama. My, my, uh, well, yeah. Stick it up. <laughs> my sister's name's Per. Stick it up, my jumper. Per. There she is, Pajama. Um, so, anyway, they were in love to the point that Ben got down on one knee. And he said to her, I want you to marry me. Wow. $1 million he spent on an engagement ring. Yeah. Have a look at that rock, Sarah. That is... I mean, isn't it 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 you're, it you're not saying that it's big and yeah. it's a diamond. Like, well, how big? Like, is it like a... I can't read how many carats it is on Fitzy's lap. Yeah, yeah, but it's, yeah, it's, but over, it's, it's over a, a carat. A million dollars. Mm. This is the thing, though. Um... His confidence in love is like his confidence in shooting at the moment because it's gone down the gurgle. It's been shot. They have broken up and he has now demanded to May Jama, Per's sister, <laughs> that he wants he wants that one million dollars back in the engagement ring. Right. You what? give me the engagement ring back. She's gone, oh, I'm keeping yeah, the sucker. But the question is, will Michael Hill take it oh, and will he know. get the My, money back? I don't know if Michael Hill is doing a million dollar. <laughs> Engagement rate. The thing is, where does it stop? If you get, the, I mean, I get it. It's a million bucks. It's a lot. But where does it stop? Do you go chasing every birthday present no, you bought no, no, her, no, every no, Valentine's no. Day no, gift, Sarah, Christmas? If the girl doesn't return the ring, mm. it's the most selfish act. But it because, was a gift. Hang on a minute. It's not a gift. It's a commitment. It's a deal. Yeah. I give you this ring as a symbol of us together, right? For the rest of our lives. That's what you're saying yes to. It's a contract. It's a deal. No, no, no. Now, no. when you break the relationship up. Mm. You haven't completed your end of the bargain. Every gift you, you give yes. someone is a symbol. This is a symbol Says of how much I love no you on way. your birthday. This is a symbol of an anniversary. You faulted on the deal. No. So you haven't kept your half of the bargain. You signed the contract and then you didn't turn up. Well, a majority of relationships, I would say the female gets to keep the ring. You give yeah. the ring back. Oh, my Whoa. gosh. Snapped. That's more yelling at Hotel Roosevelt. <laughs> no. And it's not Marlon Brando. He's not going to get his full <laughs> mill back for the ring anyway. He'll get Doesn't 600 matter. grand tops. He can reuse that ring down the track. <laughs> No. You, sorry, you cannot reuse an engagement ring. No, you can. Knowingly. Yes, you can, and that happens. 
Do you think yours? Do you think you were the first offering? Mine's, uh, do you know, I always think about this because my ring is an antique. Yeah. So, yeah, someone wore it before me and when you buy it, they tell you it was, oh, this lady and she had a great life and all yeah. this. Rubbish. You could have pulled this off oh a dead God. body in a river. We don't know. She had three failed hus- husbands and turned to <laughs> prostitution. <laughs> but it still looks good. Paula in Belmore, what's your story, Paula? Hi there, yes. Um, I had a partner and we'd gone out for two years and we thought, you know, this is this is it. And so, um, unfortunately, well, I knew he'd actually bought the ring and we, he was going to propose and it was just a matter of him waiting. It was lovely. Anyway, unfortunately, he passed away. And um, oh. after, I know, after that, um, his mother actually emailed me and asked for the ring. And, oh, and, no. and I couldn't believe it. I was disgusting, oh. and I was in such a state, and I asked everyone, I yeah. said, look, uh, you know, the, what, what do I do? Because I knew it wasn't, expe- wasn't an expensive ring. It was like $100,000. No, it was a tight and, ass, um, yeah. There's a symbol, I, it's a symbol. It is, absolutely, and I actually went home that the morning he passed. He, uh, I went home to his place that night. I knew where it was. And I went to get it, and I looked at it for the first time, and I bawled my eyes out, and I wore it because of, you know. And uh, then I got that horrible email, and I was devastated. She's devastated, and and I and I didn't give it back because I thought they said, "Paula, it's for you. It was yours." Yeah, and, uh, I think yeah, so. to it. Gee, emotional yes, story. Yes, Thanks for sharing, Paula. It's classic mother-in-law story, isn't it? Isn't it? You know? but, but, I mean, what's she going to do with it? Well, Take that's, it like, that's horrible. Yeah, I know. I'm glad you kept it. Good Thank on you, Paula. Right. Really, really well, from the Paula. heart she, there, wasn't well, it? Paula's Paula. in the running for free for 23, which goes off this afternoon as well. Chrissy Swan's back at two. And, and Kate... Tim and Joel are back at four, which will be, they'll be giving away that huge prize. It's, Good luck, Paula. It's it's a huge day at Nova. Absolute beast of a day at Why? Nova for 2023. I oh, know. He's had his... <sighs> he's had his meat and his cheese, and well, he is some, a happy little boy. I've ordered some calamari and some chicken wings and some avo on Have toast. you really? You might have a chicken this wing. This is Tom's room. That is <laughs> so I, expensive, mate. I don't mate. mind. It's on Tom's bill. Oh, oh shut, my God. Shut your legs, Tom. Hey, no, I'm not going to shut my legs anymore. And a bloke <laughs> like you shouldn't be wearing white undies either. Oh, Unnecessary. Oh. The, the, the Fitzy and Whipper podcast. I want to talk about one of the greatest lyricists of all time, Two Chains. Um, you, I mean, you'd know. Huge stuff. fan. Yeah, massive fan. Well, this is his hit song with Kanye West, "Happy Birthday." She got a big booty, so I call her big booty. Wrist moving, cooking, to it. So that's Two Chains, right? So oh, I love him. Well, he, he's massive. Like he's huge. He did he's... a song with Derulo, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Uh, it was Tommy's favourite. Trumpets. For a while. No, no, it wasn't Talk trumpets. Talk dirty, wasn't too, it? Yeah. Talk dirty. Tommy too. loved oh, that so song. Good. So Two Chains. So how's this? His what old a weapon. His old man passed away in 2012. It was a sad day for him. Obviously, he was best mates with his dad. So we're talking over 10 years ago. So the other day, he had a busted pipe down in his basement and he's just put up on Instagram yesterday, RIP Pops, had the busted pipe in the basement, they fixed my basement, went down there and in the wall they found my Pops old stash of cash. They've what? added it up. It's around about $38,000 worth of, of bills. Like just money bills hey, d- um, in a bag. Hey, Dad, before you die, maybe give me the <laughs> give me the heads up about that stash you've got. It's unbelievable. Look, a majority of them too, sir, are rolled up. So oh, that's weird. So I don't know. Two chains doesn't mind a couple of blunts himself, but that is that's what it looks like. That's going, and it was just bags and bags of cash. Wow. He's found the stash, man. It's an amazing effort. They do say that old people hide money in the house. Yeah, they never trusted banks if it's yep. under the mattress or buried. Or look in the curtain rod. Wasn't it a thing for um, bookies to bury money in the backyard? Would yeah. they roll it, though? No, I don't know why he's rolled it like that. Because unrolling 38 grand's worth of dollar bills, that's what not about, fun. Well, remember the show Mr. In Between? Mm. And they he had his safe in the house... But he had set up the safe. He had a fake safe. So when he got... Remember, he got kidnapped and yep. they said, give us your safe so we can get all the cash. Fake safe. He had a fake safe and in the safe was when you opened the safe was a bomb. Oh, that's good. Good to have a fake so safe. So he was there as he was giving them the passcode, yep. Sarah. And as they're putting it in, mm. he just at the last minute just dived away. Clever. Fake safe. It's not bad. If you found a stash of cash, Michael in Belmore. What did you find, buddy?
Uh, it was my cousin. He was demolishing a house and he got to the last wall and he's hit this wall and just about 10 grand of money just started flying in the air in this wall. So, wow. one that was, was on site was lucky enough to get, get he split the money with them. So, oh, that's yeah, good. So, well, see, yeah. the, this is, I've been told with trades, trades, if they find it, they have the right to actually keep the money. Uh, they, I they don't, don't think it's the right. They just first They just tips. do. No yeah. one's going to say anything. Well, they just don't say anything. Yeah. It's a great day at work. Well, would you? I'm surprised with two chains as plumber as well that he told him yeah. that the cash mm. was there. How do you walk out with just bags of cash though <laughs> and getting away? Getting away with it. See, you, mate. Thanks for having me. See, Jason Busy Fingers. You'd trust him, wouldn't you? Oh, without oh, a the doubt. Busy Fingers. Oh, he'd have cash everywhere. Yeah, he, He's getting booty dollars off your wife. That's no, the difference. No, no, Sarah. We move not. on, Sarah. He would never do that, and neither would she. Jackie, welcome to the show. You found a stash of cash. Yeah, we did actually. We um, were cleaning out my nana's house. She's a hundred. She's still alive, and she, we haven't even gone through half of it, but. Uh, behind paintings, in cupboards, between clothes, um, just envelopes of cash that she has known about. But just Why did she do that? Them. I don't know. She just didn't really trust banks. And I guess she's old school and, and then she started mm. to get a bit older. But she's lived at home till she's 100. So only just moved out exciting. into the nursing home. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. It is. It's like an Easter egg hunt. It's a treasure hunt. It's a treasure hunt. It is. It makes you think, though, like when you get older, let's just start putting fives around the place. I mean, nobody uses cash anymore. But it would be fun Mm. for the family to think when you die there was actually a big pot of gold. Mm. Well, on my mother's side, there was a tradition in the family that when somebody dies, all their belongings, I remember Auntie Elma died, and all the belongings were left in a shed on these tables. And I, you walk in there, Sarah. I was mm. only a teenager at the time, and they basically go, you know, they talk about Arnie Elmer, and they go, okay, everyone, it's all up for grabs. What did you get? And then you watch everyone's reactions. Oh, it's like a free for all. I, I was a teenager, so I just went over and just grabbed all the watches. That was the one that I sold at oh, Cashies for fifty bucks. The gold watch. And then Mum found out a few years later. Said, "Did anyone take Arnie Elmer's nine carat gold watch?" And no. I sold it at Cashies for fifty. <laughs> you can barely get a Macca's family meal with what yeah. you gave her her gold Just got watch. A couple of for. beers though, didn't oh, you? Sorry, Thanks, yeah. Arnie Elmer. <laughs> All right, Craig in Preston's. So let's take another call here. You found a stash of cash. I did. Yeah, it was in my grandmother's house. It was an old clothes basket in a bedroom, and nobody wanted to go through it. So I thought, oh, I'll start cleaning it out. I found about $64,000 just in oh. envelopes, stashed in stockings and in pockets. And so, yeah. Oh. Did, so did she tell anybody in the family before she no, died? She passed, she, no, she passed away and we just thought we'd start cleaning the house out. It was just in like But all, did you in, tell anyone? Yeah, yeah, I told my, I was only like 12 at the time. So I'd go and oh. tell my mum and dad and they just put it all together and put it between the family. I mean, I got yeah, a little bit, but I mean, not, not much. Mm. Craig, imagine if you kept that quiet and the next thing you know, your mum and dad are dropping you at the oh, airport with oh, five oh, mates oh, and you're oh, off to oh, Vegas. Oh, 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 yeah. Or they're, dro- <laughs> or they're locking you in the house money, and they're off to Vegas. That much money back in, six, you know, in 1970 oh, yes. something. That's jackpot, no. man. That is jackpot. Great story, Craig. Well done. I'd you're love our, to know your You're own. our two chains of the day, Craig. Well done. Craig and Uncle, if you've got a story for us, do you, Craig? Good morning, guys. How are you? Um, what happened, buddy? Yeah, I, was, I was working at this place doing some electrical work, and it was a deceased estate just cleaning it up and whatnot, and they had um, removalists in there uh, taking everything out. And I got chatting to the guys, and I said, oh, have you guys found anything sweet? And they're like, yeah, one day we found a bag and it had 90 grand in cash in it. Oh, 90 grand. So, okay, like, so can I, uh, can I ask you, in, in the industry, um, what, are, what do you guys talk about? Do you keep that quiet or do you have to hand it back to the owners? Well, well I said to them, I go, well, what'd you do with it? And he goes, well, there's three of us, so we got 30 grand each. <laughs> yeah. That's Cause, cause amazing. Because it was just yeah. a piece of safety. There was no family, he said. So, yeah, they just yeah. split it between the three. Oh. 
Nah. Yeah, uh, how that, hard did you look for family? Yeah. Let's be fair. We searched everywhere. Please. We couldn't find anybody that knew the dead person. Oh, look, they're deceased, and I doubt that they would have family. Apparently, she was really hard oh, to deal yeah. with. Yeah, of course. Great, great story. Thanks, buddy. Chris in Windsor. You found a stash of cash. Yeah, I did. Um, I didn't actually find it. I received a check in the mail for $5,000. Um, what? what little... Who's... I Your mail? Yeah, in my mail, just to me. Um, yeah. Nothing in it, just said overdue repayment. I've absolutely no idea where it came from. Ca- cashed and it you, in, and, and you, um, you, yeah, everything was all good. <laughs> oh, oh God, that's weird. So yeah. where, did it, where did it come from, though? Was it from the ATO, or Chris, or something? No, so it was from the Bank of Queensland. I probably shouldn't say this, but it was from... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> From the Bank of Queensland with my name on it, everything addressed to me, my address, and yeah, just had a little slip in it, overdue repayment for five thousand dollars. No, I have absolutely no idea who it came from. Mm. Great story, Chris. Thanks, buddy. You are not asking any questions there, are no. you? Not. Can we get MDG on the microphone? Are you there, Matt DeGroot? Uh, paging Matt DeGroot, ladies and gentlemen. Paging Matt DeGroot. He's not, no, are you he's not in his newsroom. for stash no. of rash calls, are you? No, no. <laughs> stash, stash of rash cream calls. No, it was that he lived in an apartment block mm. and the late MDG, you there, buddy? Here, mate. And the lady in the apartment block... Um, she died. Now, Matt, you didn't know whether she was actually still dead in the apartment or not, but of course the packages started piling up at her front door. And what did you do? Well, I mean, if a parcel is intended for a person who's no longer alive, I would imagine that parcel is yeah. free for anyone to claim. Oh, <laughs> Mail theft is now, a crime. Now, to be very, very clear, mate. to be very, very clear, that once it was uh, made clear that the lady had died and that there was no next yeah. of kin and that there was, in fact, a large amount of confusion about what was going to happen with any of it, so this mm. had no owner. It's not like that the unit was overrun with family yeah. members who were grieving. There were just packages and more packages. Yeah. Yeah, but then and more the cutlery's great. The crockery was great that you got. I mean, it was exciting to see what you were going to get from a dead person next. And to be honest with you, the biggest concern that people had was you are going to disturb this lady's ghost or she's going to come back and haunt you. If that's the worst oh, thing that happens, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> well played. Absolutely. Well played. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. Lights, camera, hilarity. The top trending stories in entertainment this morning. Prince Charles set to give his own TV interview to the BBC. Oh, the rebuttal. Yeah. Did I call him Prince Charles? King Charles? Uh, When's his coronation? So it's in May. The thing is, he has apparently engaged the Archbishop of Canterbury to talk to Harry because he wants Harry and Meghan at the coronation. Uh, so he yeah. has got him in to broker this deal, they're calling it. Um, William apparently is a little bit hesitant, understandably so, if that Will- is true. William needs to toughen up a bit. I'm sorry, right? Harry's come out bad all. Like, mm-hmm. he's yeah. putting his family at safety here, but he's like, I'm not going to deal with this anymore. William's just sitting in the background... Future king. Not doing anything. He's boring, mate. Nah, you'd be a bit sick of your brother making trouble for well, you when you've got to face the music at home. Yeah, I know, but go in and stick up for him, you know, every now yeah, and then. Yeah, but Harry's, Harry's coming out with stories about them getting into rumbles and, you know, yeah. William trying to knuckle him. Do you know what? You come out... And telling him he made him wear a Nazi uniform. Do you know what? You, know what? you come out and you go, you know what? It's, uh, we were talking about this with Miranda Kerr last night. It's banter. Everyone loves a good bit of banter. <laughs> yeah, and <laughs> bit different, very it's loaded. All, it's also brotherly love. Mm. Like you have a few rumbles as a kid with yeah. your siblings and then you have your ups and your downs. Yeah. Dead legs, you so, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. get over it. Yeah, is what well, I've got to say, Sarah. I've said it, and I don't care who's listening. Well, I do hope Harry and Meghan go because you sort of want to think that there can be a way forward with this. I just, yeah, I think Charles is probably doing it so it looks like the right thing to yeah. do. I don't reckon any of the family are actually going to want to hey, talk to Harry. Here's one for you. Mm. Come out, Charles, and give us a chat and talk about your brother. 
Well, oh, Andrew. Oh, no one wants to no, hear that no, story. No, 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 no. Let's talk about that because that's the controversy. Your son's just telling the truth. Well, he's Your reopened that. Not. He's reopened that case, hasn't he, Andrew? He's reneged on the um, NDA and Has the payment. He? Yeah, no, he wants, he wants, wants to back. fight it. Yeah, now that his mum's forced him not to sit silently because she's gone. And someone else has come out and said mm. they have proof that that photo was photoshopped. Ghislaine Maxwell well, from G- prison. It looks pretty legitimate. Ghislaine, yeah. Ghislaine Maxwell made a huge, huge statement as well saying that she thought that Jeffrey Epstein was killed in jail. I was like, no, no way. way. <laughs> no what way. A no one that would have wanted to is, kill him. Is the coronation going to be... Boring? Well, they're saying big concert Spice Girls, including Victoria Beckham, tip to be performing. What? It's well, going to be a big answer. gig. No, it'll yeah. be huge. Yeah, I'd be at Are I'd we keen to go? Like, do you want to take the show over there for well, the coronation? Now be... that the Spice Girls are in, yes, I do. Do you know it'll what I mean? Boring. Tommy, it'll if you be can... like Coronation Street. If you, boring. Yeah. <laughs> if you can line up the Spice Girls, Tommy, yeah. we've got to continue this road show and go from LA to London. No, See you there, man. Thanks, not, buddy. Not the way that you took the red wine off Miranda Coo's table last night. Forget that. Hey, sticking with the Brits, because tomorrow you announced this earlier, Fitz, we're giving away Harry Styles tickets. Harry in Sydney or go to the UK to see him. He's just secured a £40 million fee to perform a string of gigs in Vegas. Wow. £40 million. Pounds. It's not even a residency. They're just calling it a string what? of gigs. I wonder how many shows that is. Well, they haven't even announced what, that. I mean, 10? The poor well, bloke, he doesn't finish his world tour till July. Like, he has so much still to go, including Australia. And then they're going to send him to Vegas and to do then, a string of gigs. And then say, like we saw last night, he splits his pants on stage. Well, see, Amazing. Well, it's a rough one. The corporates we were talking about, Beyonce got 35 mil for that hotel in Dubai. Yeah. Did we just find out as well that the killers did a couple of corporates while they were in Australia? Two mm. corporates? I think they did one in Melbourne, yes. Yeah. For like $2 million each. Incredible, Massive. isn't it? And what, they play, what, seven or eight songs and they're done? Oh, yeah. Mate, I would have done it for a mil. Did you also see, speaking of Harry Styles, the pictures of his ex, Olivia Wilde and Jason Sudeikis, hugging on the street. So this is many, the couple that had the massive fight and the divorce papers served to her in the middle of a... Uh, many, many thoughts I have on that, Says. What do you think? It's I, fake. Well, for one, um, I can't believe how much he looks like Pete Hellier. Um, <laughs> he does what? a bit. <laughs> Second to that, I, I wouldn't be giving her a hug for what she did with Harry. I'm right off her. And I just watched that movie on the plane with you. What was that Don't called? Don't worry, darling. Oh, my God. Harry she Styles. Wasn't You'd hey. be cheating on your, your partner for Harry Styles. I just, I, I just, I'm upset for him. Yeah. And he doesn't deserve it. No, I know they've no. got kids together. They do. I totally disagree. This is a great plan of attack by him. He looks like the one that's forgiving. Yeah. And goes, you know what? We're a family. Makes him look even better. I agree. And they're not back together. They'd just gone for a walk. TMZ followed them and got these photos of them hugging and saying goodbye. They're smiling. They're laughing. Well, I He's hope, the bigger man. Hang on. I hope tactically he's trying to welcome her back into his life mm. until she says we should give it another go. And then he says, I'm so sorry. I'm seeing Maria, your best friend, up your Maria. bum with a broken stubby. <laughs> oh, no, they don't know what that means. <laughs> and a lot of people here in America don't either. Get a dog up here. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Finally, guys, this is the news I wanted. We we sort of thought that Rita Ora and Taika Waititi were married. It was kind of confirmed, but not. She has finally done an interview uh, in the UK and confirmed that they're married and given us a little tidbit about what went on with the wedding. Will you take Taika's surname? I've definitely thought about it, but I've worked very hard for this Ora name, I have to say. Mm. <laughs> but I do believe in, um, you know, sharing the journey. And I don't know, I haven't really kind of decided yet. No, I know it's a very... It was a small wedding. Did it all go to plan? Were there any stresses? Was it, was it all perfect? Really perfect. It was just exactly, exactly how I wanted it. It was just nice and perfect. Completely yeah. how I wanted it. Just to myself sometimes. It was really sweet. So it must have been very small, just a few of them, a couple it of friends. Sounds like just the two of them. Yeah, I think it may have been. I mean, her new song is this one, You Only Love Me. And the video clip, it's a good song. Love it. Yeah, me too. The video clip starts with a, a series of celebrity friends giving video messages saying, I'm so sorry I wasn't at the wedding. Why wasn't I invited to the wedding? All this sort of stuff. Funny, so you, funny. You, yeah, she's oh, sort I of love, making I it I love fun. Cameo. Humorous. Cameo is so <laughs> funny. Is. Tara Reid was there. <laughs> Hi, Matt. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> it's Tara. Tara. I'm on lots of medication. <laughs> oh, oh wow. She did not say that. The Fitzy and Whipper podcast. I don't know if I'm ready for marriage. At first sight tonight, it's back. I'm, I'm pumped. I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. I hate to say it, but 
I've wanted something strong and regular on my screen for a long time. Well, I tell you what, though, it's here's another question that I'm throwing out to everybody: Is the Bachelor dead? Well, it's tough. They tried something new this year. Three bachelors yes. is a big commitment because you're not getting time enough to invest in everybody, mm. but you're also getting this great variety of three different types of relationships. I think I think you've moved too far from the original format. Yeah. That's my concern. Well, yeah, but see, the format was it was it was dwindling, mate. Like people yeah. were getting bored of the same dates I get over. It, and you I can get only it. hang off a cliff with each other for so long. Yeah, I understand. You can only pop a bottle of champagne on a boat and end yeah. up on a private the beach yep. so many times but then when well, I we need something you need to really ramp it up Michael Clark the next bachelor <laughs> that would be Sarah, incredible yes yeah. and you throw yes. Pip and Jade in there oh jeez <laughs> oh, okay now I'm tuning in <laughs> but you know what I think it is like why I, I tuned in from, I don't know, maybe the third episode when mm. it was on TV mm. and I saw three guys I didn't know and conversation that I wasn't across. Yeah. And then I felt like I had to get across three different love stories instead uh, of know the original format and go, all these girls are trying to win the guy. But it works for maps. There's, what, ten different couples that we invested in. Yeah, you do. And none of them, sk- none of them stay. Like, no. how many of them actually stay together? Okay, so there was the other thing. There was a bit of cheese factor. I mean, Felix. There was a bit of cheese factor. Who was he? Him. Which one was he? Oh, well, Felix he is the big, the big tall one. He had the big white teeth, didn't he? He's the big tall one. Mm. Now, have a listen to the line he finishes off here with Jess at the finale. I've had to make so many compromises into just no. No. my fundamental beliefs and things that I thought a relationship would be. You know, when I asked you to sort of make a decision, there it was you couldn't say back to him. You know, I don't love you. That chapter of my life has now been closed. <laughs> Kiss me like you're single. Oh, oh. don't! had a boyfriend, wasn't yeah, it? Oh, kiss I mean, me like you're single. It's Ugh. not bad. It's not a bad As line. As if you've never said to Gary, Sarah, mm. let's make this feel like a one-night stand. Mm. I, I've tried before that let's make out like we're teenagers, but then you don't really oh, want to do that, so you're sick. sort of going for the snogging and then you think, well, well so you were, you were drinking Maduri oh. out of a... <laughs> wow. Out, out of, of a, a McDonald's Coke. Gosh, plastic cup, yeah. Gary finished in his jeans. <laughs> hey, um, so look, can we... All right, let's go to Jed. Now I'd watch that show. <laughs> Jed is Travis Barker. Travis Barker on the show, the one with the tats, the drummer. Oh, the drummer, yeah. I, I saw, the I saw that mm. date. He took a girl on a date and played the drums, which was a great idea. Um, but Jed, Jed had to dump Angela on the finale. <laughs> her, her reaction was just priceless. I've decided that we can't move forward. I'm really, really sorry because I know you've opened up to me like so much and seen you from the start and where we are now. I'm, I'm really, really sorry. Drum roll. Right. right. Okay. <laughs> So was he. She, she was ready to get out of there. Why didn't he do a drum roll? The other one. Like, Thomas, look, I can, can confirm to everyone, Thomas proposed to Leah. She said, you got, you're about to hear the proposal, right? They're not together anymore. Oh, are they? Oh, hang no, on a minute. No, oh. it, it can be confirmed. The other thing as well, right? Poor Thomas. Thomas th- was the one. He was hot. But he had a bit of an accent. Yeah, he yeah. Had a, yeah, but he had a different voice. He it's had weird. But he um, he had the David Beckham's going on. So in the show, Sarah, we've mm. found out since in the show he said, "I don't need to go and meet the final two girls' parents. I've already made my decision." Okay. It has been revealed that he actually did go and meet both the parents, <laughs> but it was so boring oh, that, that they, they made him it. record. <laughs> We can't. No way. We don't want to get another episode out of you. Can you just record that you made your decision and we won't go oh. meet any of the parents? Because oh. it was just bad TV. <laughs> That's brutal. So can we hear the moment? Like, was it true? Yeah. Did it feel like true love? See, this is what when you think of some of the great proposals on The Bachelor and the endings over yeah. the years. I yep. mean, this was Thomas and Leah. I want to create life with you and just really live life to the fullest. And I'm so blessed I found you. Will you marry me? Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, that's wow. 
crap. It's hard. It's just it doesn't tough. compare to Sophie Monk oh. dumping Jared on the beach, oh, does it? And Jared. I mean, moments well, like Jared's that. Jared's still walking. <laughs> Do you? He, he, he's still he's done his <laughs> 30, 35th lap around the island. Well, Jared's on the Nullarbor, I think, <laughs> somewhere. The poor bugger. He's got lost. He's still in a blue suit, though, and he's sweating. His face is redder than Remember ever. Remember when he went on Bachelor in Paradise? Poor bugger. Oh. Was laying by the pool and got burnt on the first day. <laughs> <laughs> for the rest of filming. And then he cracked it. He, he, was, a, it. he was a lobster because everyone was pointing it out as yeah, well. Just going, went, Jared, there's 50 plus there. He, didn't, on. he said, I don't, I'm not here for sunscreen. I'm here for love. Yeah, and then someone said to him, of course I'm burnt. I'm on a bloody island, mate. He got really angry about it. And then he came out and said that he had rosacea. There's, there's, okay, there's your three bachelors that you need. Michael Clark, Jared. Mm. Who else could you throw into that mix? You don't bring back Who's Jared. lucky in love, lucky out of love in Australia? Dr. Chris Brown. Oh. Already on contract with the network. Nice guy. Yeah, but all the girls would be going for brownie. Oh, yeah, in it, that pick. Wouldn't they? Imagine, imagine Pup trying to keep up with that. Um, God, he's not taking that? any of the girls to India if he does that. Oh. Not on There's December no 17. <laughs> no way, no. Still waiting for Headley Thomas to put together his podcast of what happened December 17. Do you know what, though? Remember the Bachelor finale when it was... Sam Frost and Blake Garvey? Yes. yes. And there was an issue. Yeah, that was incredible. We found out that there was a lion sort of 50 metres away and they kept having to interrupt the shoot for the finale because Sam nearly got eaten by a lion. I think you've put a bit of icing on I've that story. I've never put any mail you on that. Have. There was no mail on oh that. Oh, my gosh. They stopped a lion. From attacking no, Sam Frost. No. It had her by the leg. A producer no. grabbed the lion's tail. And they tried to push Blake Garvey into the lion's <laughs> mouth. Tom's trying to wind up the show. Oh, sorry, aren't you, Tom? Tom, I didn't see you over there. No, it's okay. The Fitzy and Whippers show is a Nova podcast. For more great comedy shows like this, head to novapodcast.com.au.